This is when things got a little Lord of the Flies, like people were fighting, um, people were stealing stuff from each other's tents. Everyone was a little bit in survival mode because by now it was pitch black. Pitch black, you could barely see what was going on. There were a few lights set up. There was barely electricity. I think there was a station where you could plug in your phone. Um, there was no da data. I don't even think there was Wi-Fi. Or maybe there was Wi-Fi where, where you could plug in your phone. And because I was working that weekend, I had my laptop and my camera with me. So I found a set of lockers just sitting on the gravel. I had brought my gym padlock and I didn't want to leave my stuff in the tent. So I, I locked up my laptop and my camera in the lockers. I was probably the only person to use those lockers. But technically someone could have like picked up the lockers and put them in a truck and driven them away, but I just didn't want to leave them in the tent. So once we got settled in, we didn't really know what to do, but we all walked over to the food tent. Some locals there were serving sandwiches, which you probably saw the infamous picture on Twitter. Um, and it was around this time that I was really annoyed <laughs> and I started getting annoyed at my boyfriend. I'm pretty sure we had a fight because he was just of the attitude of like, let's make the most of this. And I was like, no, let's go. Like tomorrow we're leaving. I don't want to be here. Um, so we got into some fight and ended up at the bar as we were fighting. And so I ordered one drink cost me $15, so they were charging New York prices. That was the only drink I paid for there. And um, eventually by 10 o'clock, I was like, well, I don't know if I have a choice in this matter. I should also try to make the most of it. So one DJ set up on the stage. This was also the night of my birthday. By midnight, it was gonna be my 30th birthday, so I didn't wanna be a sourpuss on my birthday. Also around this time, the bars were largely unattended. So locals had been working the bars, but around nighttime, like there was no Billy around. There was no one organizing this place anymore. And a lot of the, the locals who were working on the campground, let's call it, I think they had left because I remember we were able to go up to bars that were pretty much unattended and grab a bottle of whatever. So he never bought a drink ever like after that first one. Uh, we had some drinks with us. We danced in front of this one DJ. There was maybe a handful of people when we got there and a couple more people joined us. And then at midnight, the DJ had to pull the plug. Literally the music stopped. We were actually kind of having a good time then. And we were like, why not just let us play songs from our phone? But no, there was no more music at this music festival at midnight. So this was the time where I decided I was done. Like I was gonna go to bed and um, my boyfriend wanted to keep partying. Him and some friends continued to party and I tried to go back to bed where my other friends were sleeping. Some people had gone to bed early. So, Going to bed, I say that lightly, there was no actual sleeping. I was up, anxious, like freaked out. I couldn't actually communicate with my boyfriend because there was no data. Um, I got up at two, three in the morning realizing that my stuff was still out there. So I walked the campgrounds to get my laptop, my camera, and I just had too much anxiety in my body to sleep that night. Um, so by the time, 7, 8 a.m. rolled around when the sun was up, I was so relieved. And I checked my phone and that was when I saw that Fire had emailed everyone to say, due to circumstances out of their control, they had to cancel the, the event. And that was the best news of my last 24 hours. <laughs> I was so relieved that I didn't have to try to convince my boyfriend to stay another day. Um, if you've seen the video of him dancing at the festival, you'll understand why. So that was the best news ever by 8 a.m. Just set me into motion. I told my friends, pack up, we're going. 
Um, we ran to the house. They asked for our information to book flights for us. So we wrote down a list of all our names, our birth dates, our passports, gave it to them. Um, and then we're like, wait, that's going to get us nowhere. We just wrote our stuff down on a piece of paper. That's not going to get us a flight. So we sat around that house for a little while. And then eventually we we're just like, let's go to the airport and, and figure out our way out of here. And so we paid a local with a truck to let us all jump into the back. And he drove us to the airport. We got to the airport. This was probably like nine in the morning, maybe 10. We got to the airport and there were probably a hundred people already in line. So some of those people had been there all night and some of them had gotten there in the morning, just like us. And the airport's tiny. Like we just took over the place. No one knew what was going on. No one had a flight. Yeah, we spent the entire day in the airport. There was a bar across the street. So a lot of people were just like drinking and partying and the party continued. But by the afternoon, maybe it was the day drunkenness kicking in. By the afternoon, there were there was a lot of aggression, a lot of aggression, even on my part. This woman wanted to cut in front of me and I said no, and we almost got into a fight. And same with this guy, this guy like, was t I don't remember what was said. He was telling me off and I was ready to like punch him. Everyone was super aggressive because no one wanted to get that news that, sorry, there's no more flights out for you today. You're gonna be stuck here another night. But by around five or 6 p.m., we all got boarded onto a plane and that was just the biggest relief of my life. We arrived in Miami that evening. We had booked an Airbnb last minute, settled in, cleaned up, and then we went out that night officially for my birthday. So that was my 24 hours experience at the actual fire festival. Overall, wasn't as bad as some people are saying it in the documentary, but I personally hated it a lot. <laughs> and there were some red flags that we certainly could have paid more attention to, to know that this festival was in no way prepared for us. Yeah, but once I got to Miami, we saw that the media had picked up this story quite a bit. I think I shared a few posts on Facebook and then my friends in journalism passed it along. So I actually got interviewed that weekend by the CBC, which is a news station here in Canada. At that time, there was this story that anyone who went to Fire Festival was this like stupid influencer who paid $10,000 to be there. And I was like keen to let the world know that we didn't pay $10,000. So if you hear my interview, I'm trying to like brush it off. Like, oh, it wasn't a big deal. We only paid $500 a ticket. Honestly, once we got there and we saw the reality, our main goal then became to get out and go back to Miami. At least that was my goal. I, some of us did really make the best of it and still danced and had a fun time uh, the one night we spent there. But my goal was to get out of there. And at that point, honestly, we did not really expect to see any of the money that we paid. Um, in our case, we got a group package deal, so we each paid 500 US dollars to get there. So we pretty much assumed that we wouldn't see it again. And we also loaded up our wristbands because it was a cashless environment. They kept pressuring us to add cash to our wristbands so that we could buy things while we were there. So several of us put money on those wristbands ranging from 200 to $2,000. So whether we see that money refunded or not, I think we're all skeptical until that day actually happens. I hope it does, but we're kind of treating it like a wash right now. Yeah, it was interesting, the media attention. We had no idea there was that much attention while we were there. We just enjoyed the rest of our time in Miami. This poster that you see right here, it's actually a woman in a pool holding up a cake with 30 on it. So I bought it as a memory of my 30th birthday. And yeah, I had a great time the rest of the weekend in Miami. So yeah, I think that's a good good rendition of my fire Festival story. If I have any more thoughts um, about it, I will certainly share, but that was my experience at fire Festival.